Welcome. This short video is going to talk about the basics of the bond market. And here we have bond supply and bond demand come together to determine a bond market equilibrium. And in this bond market equilibrium, there's an equilibrium bond price, which also implies an equilibrium interest rate. So activity in the bond market determines the overall level of interest rates in the economy. Shifts in bond supply and bond demand can lead us to a new overall level of interest rates as they affect the bond market equilibrium. Remember, when looking at bond markets, bond price and yield are inversely related. So anything that happens to bond price will push the yield in the opposite direction. Lower bond prices mean higher yields, or in other words, a higher interest rate. Higher bond prices mean a lower yield or a lower interest rate. So let's begin with bond supply. When we're talking about bond supply, we're talking about the behavior of borrowers, or also known as bond issuers. Those that issue bonds, their behavior determines the supply curve, and they are borrowing money. So a supply curve is quantity supplied as a function of price, or implicitly a function of yield as well, since the price will determine a certain yield. Like any supply curve, the bond supply curve is upward sloping. A lower bond price means a lower quantity supplied of bonds. And let's think about why that would be true. We have a lower bond price, that means a higher yield. Bond price and yield, opposite directions. A higher yield means it's more expensive to borrow money. So those people that make up the bond supply curve are less likely to borrow money at higher yields, and that's a lower quantity supplied of bonds. Lower bond price, lower quantity supplied of bonds, that's an upward sloping bond supply curve. Lower bond price, a lower quantity supply to bonds. Higher bond price, a higher quantity supply to bonds. Changes in bond price or the yield move us along the same bond supply curve, up or down, depending on the direction of the change. If we're shifting to a new bond supply curve, some other outside factor is going to cause that shift to happen. One of these outside factors are changes in government borrowing. Um, if there's an increase in government borrowing, the government comes in, into the bond market as a borrower and a very large borrower, a large customer, we're going to see the bond supply curve increase. And in our model, a supply increase is a shift to the right. So the bond supply would shift right as the government increases its borrowing. New supply curve to the right of the old one. At each and every price, you can see that there's a larger quantity supplied of bonds in this instant. What else can shift the bond supply curve? A change in business conditions is another thing that can affect borrowing. And particularly, a change in business conditions will affect incentives to expand production, and you often need to borrow to do that. So a good conditions where expected profitability is rising would lead to an increase in the supply of bonds. In particular, this really the bond supply curve is going to be linked to the business cycle. An expected economic expansion will shift bond supply to the right. Expected inflation will impact the bond supply curve. Rising inflation would decrease the real cost of borrowing. So if we expect inflation to rise, we actually expect the supply of bonds to increase because the real cost of borrowing will be lower. And remember, this is because you borrow money up front. If you're repaying those nominal dollars and inflation is happening at the same time, your repayment doesn't have the same purchasing power as what you borrowed in the first place. So higher inflation decreases the real cost of borrowing at a fixed nominal interest rate. So higher expected inflation shifts the bond curve to the right. Now let's look at the other side of our bond market, the bond demand curve. So bond demand is the behavior of lenders. It is the behavior of people that are buying bonds. So people that buy bonds are giving money to others to use for their capital projects. Bond demand curve is quantity demanded as a function of bond price and yield. Demand curves are usually downward sloping. Bond demand is no exception here. Lower bond price means a higher quantity demanded of bonds. And let's think about why. Lower bond price means a higher yield. 
A higher yield is more attractive to people that are holding bonds. It's a higher return to that investment. So we'd see a higher quantity demanded of bonds. So we have a downward sloping demand curve in the bond market. Changes in bond price or yield move us along the bond demand curve. They'll move us up and down that bond demand curve as bond price rises or falls. If we have a shift in bond demand, we have to think about what outside factors are going to cause that shift to happen. There's a lot of factors that affect asset demand. One of these is wealth. Higher wealth increases asset demand in general. So higher wealth will certainly increase bond demand because bonds are a financial asset. So bond demand would shift to the right. A change in expected inflation? Well, rise in inflation decreases the real return to bondholders. Right? It decreases the cost of borrowing, but that means it decreases the real return to bondholders. So higher expected inflation, bond demand shifts left. It actually decreases. Bondholders do not like inflation. A change in expected interest rates? Well, if interest rates are expected to rise, the value of existing bonds will fall. If interest rates are expected to rise, you might wait and want to buy a bond later at the higher interest rate. So, higher expected interest rates would decrease bond demand. What about the risk of bonds? That's also going to determine whether or not bonds are attractive as an investment. Riskier assets are less attractive, holding all else constant. People don't like risk. So if bonds are perceived to be riskier than other assets than they were before, we can expect bond demand to fall or shift to the left. A change in liquidity of bonds relative to other assets. Liquid assets are more attractive to buyers. Liquidity refers as how easy is it to convert an asset to cash. So if bonds are easy to buy and sell, that makes them attractive in case someone needs to liquidate them. If bonds are hard to buy and sell, they're less attractive. So liquid assets are more attractive to buyers. So if bonds become more liquid, easier to buy or sell quickly, we would expect the demand for bonds to increase because bonds would become more attractive as a financial asset. With all these factors, we can get shifts in bond demand and bond supply. And when there's a shift in bond demand or bond supply, we'll get a new equilibrium bond price, and that will correspond to a new equilibrium level of interest rates. So here's our bond market equilibrium. Supply and demand intersect. And if we get a new supply curve, if supply shifts to the right, we would actually expect bond price to fall and interest rates to rise. So if we observe rising interest rates, one of the possible reasons is an increase in bond supply.